Would you rather eat chocolate pudding that tastes like actual shit? <laughs> or actual shit that tastes like chocolate pudding? This is from Mike Chu. Is Mike here? What? Dude, what? Who have you asked this question to? Um, I've done interviews and I asked the people being interviewed, asked friends and stuff. Yeah. You've asked friends? Yeah. Are these your friends? No. This is your girlfriend? Did he ever ask you that question? He did. What? <laughs> what did you say? I said the chocolate pudding that tastes like shit. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait, 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 finish. The way you started that sentence so normal, you're like, I said the chocolate pudding that tastes like shit. You said it like it's like the train you take to work. I take the L, sometimes it's down. The chocolate pudding that tastes like shit, why? Because you'd be eating shit. That's actually incredibly astute. That, I think that is the right answer. Yeah, you're right, because I was like, if I ate yummy shit, I'm still eating shit. That's actually, did you do the long division on that? Like that fast you already had it in your head did she for real do that do it that fast stop are you serious is that your test you're like and that's when i knew i loved her <laughs> have you put a ring on it because of that are you serious dude if she takes that question seriously and still wants to be with you <laughs> commit if i did that with my wife and i've known her forever she'd be like i'm out <laughs> as a parent what do you feel like would be scarier your daughter dating a brown fuck boy, <laughs> or her dating a white fuck boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Heavy. That's heavy. This is from Suba? Where's Suba? You really thought about this. You wanna you want know, I already, I know what the answer is. You gotta know, I would take brown fuck boy because I can tackle what I know. You know what I mean? Like, I know the DNA. I know, you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like, like Mr. Miyagi with the Karate Kid, where it's like, I've been, I've been that there before. Like, yeah, I've seen the move. I was once one. I was like, I've seen the move. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What would I do? I'd be like, let me see your phone. I'd check the phone real quick. And you'd be like, ah, I, just, I don't, I'd be like, give me the passcode. I'd do the face recognition. He wouldn't give me the passcode, I would just do this. And I'd do the thing, and then I'd start looking through, and I would just start seeing, all right, who are we texting? What are we working with here? Um, I'd look at his favorites. What, Insta or Finsta? I'd open the account, I'd switch. No. I'd do the fake one too. Click on the little triangle thing, check the DMs. <laughs> Super scrub. Then go to his Safari browser, check what he's searching. If it's just clean, oh, www.google.com, that's all you search for? I'm like, this dude's a fucking freak. Yeah. Then I would turn location on. He would text me, just for, just, hey, just so we can be in touch. And then you know how you have location on your text? And that was just. I just sit back at home and watch it all unfold. And just have them geotag. So that, that would be my plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, I would probably just like stay within 200 to 300 yards of where they're going. <laughs> what is the dumbest way you've ever been injured? Alina. What, what's the dumbest way you've been injured? I got pecked by a chicken. You got pecked by a chicken? <laughs> It, you, don't have to, you don't have to establish the country. Getting pecked by a chicken is crazy. Probably the dumbest injury for me, I mean, this is like an old thing. Like I reached over to try to, my daughter like dropped a toy off the bed and I, we're like we were playing on the bed and I reached over and like my shoulder popped out, <laughs> just grabbing a toy. And I was like, this is bad. I, are there people who work for Facebook? There's gotta be people who work for Facebook here. <laughs> you guys all pointed? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You know what's so crazy? The thing that I, I empathize with you guys the most is that, like, if he ever walks into the office, you, you just have to act like it's normal. With the, just the weird... Do you know what I mean? He's like... 
can I get some coffee? And you're just like, <laughs> sure, Mark. And it's just like a fucking... It's so weird. Did anyone else feel how fucked up it was? I feel like it's a power move. I don't know if it bothered you guys. It, it, it bothered me deeply watching it during the whole testimony. Does it, did it bother you at all? You were in a book club with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was only 20 people in it. Oh, How was it? It was cool, actually. He was, he, like, I would think he would talk a lot in it, but he was actually really quiet during the book club. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then there were, like, there were actually a lot smarter people around him in the room. Like, there there were smarter, smarter people than him? There were a lot of people who worked there, like, by a bunch of seniors, and he was, like, PhDs, and he was really, like, well-read, and he dropped out of college. Are you Indian? <laughs> are, you, are you Indian? Pakistani. Pakistani. You're South Asian. Yeah, you're flexing all the stuff that doesn't matter. <laughs> They're like, yeah, 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 you started Facebook. You're worth $70 billion. Uh, did you take OCHEM? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, Yo, go get your ass to the Caribbean. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, as a Daisy growing up in America, what was the lunch item that you wanted to take to school while growing up that your parents wouldn't buy? This is from Assis. Is Assis here? What was the item for you? Can I tell you? I'll tell you mine. Because this, people get mad at me. They're like, you always just deflect. Uh, Dunkaroos? Which don't exist anymore! Now I got some money, I can't even get Dunkaroos. And then I was like on a Dunkaroo hunt and then Chrissy Teigen tried to find Dunkaroos. This is on Twitter, but they don't sell Dunkaroos anymore. They sell like Dunk... Dunkables or something like that, but they're not, it's not with chocolate or white frosting. It's this like weird knockoff, bizarre thing. And then there's people that you can buy them from on eBay that have been hoarding them for years. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not willing to die. To... <laughs> All right, um, you guys remember the cheese cracker, the like the, the rectangle crackers with the orange cheese? That's definitely not cheese. And then it has like the little, the red shovel. <laughs> Yeah. Handy snacks. I've never seen a snap for handy. You're like, handy snacks. <laughs> handy snacks. Those two. If I get those two, I'd be... I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even do the show. I'd be very happy. <laughs> well, what were yours? Lunchables. Lunchables? What, what, what were those like? My parents never let, let me get them. Uh, the, package, the package looked great. But I hear they're disgusting. I've asked people. They're like, it was gross. Lunchables. Were Lunchables good? <laughs> yeah? I'm sorry. I, like, I immediately went to a white person. I'm like, I'm sorry. 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 I feel bad. I feel bad. I feel bad. Tell, tell me. <laughs> Did your parents let you date in high school? <laughs> um, they were, but were they good? I, could, I, could, I, felt, I thought it was so cool when like, people would stack. They'd be like... on the pizzas. Like the little pizzas. Were they good? They were cold. I remember one time I had a bite of them. I'm like, these are cold. <laughs> Loved your recent interview with Daisy Kids. A beer con was super cool. What did you learn from these kids? Do you think their experience growing up as an ABCD is any different from yours? Um, I learned what the woe is. That was cool. The... <laughs> um, yeah, a beer was awesome. We actually met, I met him months ago. We did this sketch called Indians as Bad as We Want to Be in like the first episode of the show. Thanks to John Kapoor, I know that I can be a doctor who fucks around in the drug game. A kid named Raj ain't nothing to fuck with. And we were shooting it, and Jim Margolis, who was our showrunner, showrunner at the time, uh, like came up to me and was like, dude, this kid keeps dancing. And I was like watching this like skinny little kid like floss, like, <laughs> and he just wouldn't sit still, and then he would like do his lines, but then he'd dab. A kid named Raj ain't nothing to fuck with. Okay, so what do I say? A mouse. So we got cut from the sketch. Um, and I felt bad. I was like, this kid is like amazing. And I need to find a way to like use him in something. He's so incredible. And so he came and he was like the youngest kid in that entire group, but he had so much confidence. I love that guy. What is the most scared you've ever been?
Oh, this is weird. Okay, so this this is actually a true story. So I remember in like 2009 or 2010, I was performing at a at a college in Colorado, and uh, it, apparently in Colorado, there's a lot a lot of ghost hunters. There's a lot of like haunted hotels and like haunted places that you can go to and stay at if you're into like chasing apparitions. And so I was staying at this place called the Black Monarch Hotel, and it was a, it was like a saloon slash hotel and. It was just weird. So I got there during the day, and I'm like, eh, it's really old and run down. And I, I felt like I was in a movie. They're just like, welcome to the Black Monarch. And I'm like, stop talking that way. <laughs> um, like, Do you want anyone to walk you upstairs and give you the tour of the, of the ancient hotel? And I'm like, I just want to take a nap. Go up to my room, and I took a nap. It was weird. It was just like kind of old and, and, and dingy. And then I did the show, and I came back at night. And then I got really spooked, and I started like looking around. And I'm like, this isn't just dingy. I think this is like for real, for real haunted. So I go back to the front desk and they're like, are you, are you going to stay up for the midnight show? And I'm like, what's the midnight show? <laughs> and in the saloon, you're supposed to go in there after midnight and you're supposed to see a ghost. A ghost might perform on the piano. And this is like a big like thing. And I'm like, no, I'm not coming for the midnight show. <laughs> I go upstairs and um, I like, I put my ba backpack down and I just look at this chair in front of my bed and there's just a porcelain doll staring at me, like an old porcelain doll. I start freaking out. I'm like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. And then on the desk of the bed, so I start packing my bags up, and on the desk, there's just a guest book. And it goes back like a hundred years. People are just writing in the diary. I'm like, Dude, I gotta get, this is like creeping me out. I run across town. The only other hotel there was like a Hampton Inn. So I go to the Hampton Inn, and I'm like, I need to get a room tonight. And they're like, oh, you went to the Black Monarch Hotel? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, it's haunted. So, I don't know. I don't. I don't say. I don't think I believe in ghosts, but I don't not believe in them. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna try it. You, know, you ever had those things like growing up? Your, your friends would be like, "Hey, come in the bathroom, say Bloody Mary three times." I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. And they're like, "It's not even your religion." I'm like, I just don't wanna. I don't wanna test it. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, we're just gonna say Candyman and just try. And I'm like, I'm not gonna try Lunchables and I'm not gonna try saying Bloody Mary three times.